Hey guys, welcome to another calculus video. This video is designed to be watched after you've watched the conceptual video about definition of derivative. That's my, not my video. The link was sent to you guys in email for those of you that are watching this later. I'll put the link in the comments as well. Uh, it's a good video and so I didn't. I decided not to, to try to repeat it. And so you watch that video and then you'll be ready for this one. So what we're focusing on is how to evaluate the limit definition of the derivative, how to find the derivative using the limit definition. And it is the limit, remember, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So all that stuff that I expected you to practice and review on the difference quotient, here, here it is. Now, now you see why. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to work a couple of examples, and then we got to talk about uh, when the derivative doesn't exist. And that, that does happen because it's a limit, right? Limits don't have to exist. So let's take a look at a function f of x equal to 3 minus 2x squared. Okay. Um, and so if I want to find f prime of x, then I need to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. What is f of x plus h? Take the x plus h and plug it in here. So you get 3 minus 2 times x plus h, all squared, minus f of x, which is 3 minus 2x, all squared, all over h. Okay, don't forget to keep writing the limit until you plug in for h. Uh, let's FOIL this out. You can't distribute this 2 before you FOIL this out because exponents come before multiplication. And so we get 3 minus 2 times the group x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Make sure that you FOIL that out properly. Uh, minus 3 plus 2x squared. Distribute the negative sign all over h. Now we're going to distribute the negative 2. All right. Uh, again, if you guys can do multiple steps here, kind of in your head or whatever, that's fine, but make sure you show me enough work that I know it was you. 3 minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared minus 3 plus 2x squared all over h. And if you've done some of these before, you know how they're supposed to work. Minus 2x squared and plus 2x squared plus 3 and minus 3, you should be left only with things with h's in them, and so you take the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 4xh minus 2h squared all over h, factor out the h, you get uh, negative 4x minus 2h inside here, and then of course the h's divide away and leave a 1, and so that gives us the limit as h goes to 0 of minus 4x minus 2h. And now we can evaluate that limit by plugging in a 0 for h. And you get negative 4x. So for f of x equal to 3 minus 2x squared, the derivative function for that is negative 4x. The derivative function gives you slope of tangent line, instantaneous rate of change, all that kind of stuff that they talked about it in the other video, okay? So this is the process. It's lengthy, but it's not hard. It's just step-by-step -step algebra, mainly algebra, okay? And so I want you guys to try this one. Very similar. There happen to be two variables here. So you're looking for Q prime. Don't worry about the variable, right? Q prime, which is the limit as H goes to zero of q of eight, t plus h minus q of t all over h. Okay, that's the definition for the derivative for this function q of t. I want you guys to pause the video, try this out, and then come back and I'll go over it with you. Okay, so once again, there are two places to plug in for t. And so that means your q of t plus h it's going to look like 10 plus 5 times t plus h minus t plus h, the quantity squared. 
And then when you subtract Q of T, Q of T is all this stuff, 10 plus 5T minus T squared. Make sure you group it that way. And that's all over H. Okay. So distribute the 5, foil out the T plus H, and distribute the negative. I'm going to skip an algebra step here, minus 10 plus 5T plus 5H minus t squared minus 2th minus h squared minus 10 minus 5t plus t squared. Distributing the negative sign. Again, if you need to take more than one step to do what I just did, that's fine, but you should be able to follow me. Um, minus t squared and plus t squared subtract away. 5t and negative 5t subtract away. 10 and negative 10 subtract away. Okay, so what are you left with? You are left with the limit as h goes to 0, of 5h minus 2th minus h squared. And that's all over h. I believe we see that, once again, there's an h everywhere. Factor out the h. You get 5 minus 2t minus h inside. On the outside, you just have an h, and so the h is divided away and leave a 1 in the denominator. And so now we can evaluate this 5 minus 2t minus h. We can evaluate that limit by just plugging in 0 for h. And so we end up with q prime of t is equal to 5 minus 2t. So that is your derivative function for the original function q that was given in the problem. Okay. I'm going to work one more for you because, again, these difference quotients are lots of algebra, and so I want you to see a couple different types of algebra that you may need. Let's work through this problem. f of x is equal to square root of x plus 2. So if we want to find f prime using the limit definition, you end up with f of x plus h, which is the square root of x plus h plus 2 minus f of x, which is the square root of x plus 2, all over h. And now you might not quite remember what to do with this, but we've just seen it recently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, because the numerator is what has the square roots in it. If I do it to the bottom, though, i got to do it to the top, so I get the square root of x plus h plus 2, plus the square root of x plus 2. In the denominator, we're not going to FOIL that out at all, but in the numerator, if we FOIL it out, we get some cancellation, which is really good. So I get these first two multiplied together and gives me x plus h plus 2, the square roots multiplied together, you go away, and then minus the group, square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2, these two guys give me an x plus 2, but again, it's a group. The middle terms of the foiling cancel out. And then the bottom is h times the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. Okay, x minus x is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0. And so you end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of h on the top only divided by h times all this stuff. h divides away the h in the numerator and the denominator, leaves a 1 up top. And so we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 all over square root of x plus h plus 2 plus square root of x plus 2. And so now if I plug in for h equal to 0, I get the square root of x plus 0 plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2, so that's square root of x plus 2 twice in the bottom. And so f prime is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x plus 2. And that's your derivative function for f of x equals square root of x plus 2. Okay. So that's how you would handle a square root Okay, using the conjugate. I want you guys to pause the video again and try this one. Here you're going to end up with a complex fraction, which means you've got to simplify the numerator and simplify it down. Let me remind you again what the 
definition of derivative is. You should have this in your notes, but just to remind you, we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this time, f of x is 3 divided by x plus 1. So you all pause the video, give this one a shot, and then I'll go over it with you. Okay, so let's plug in here. What does f of x plus h look like? It's 3 over x plus h plus 1, right? Just plug in for the x. Minus 3 over x plus 1, that's f of x. And that's all over h. We need a lowest common denominator, which turns out to just be the product of the two denominators, x plus h plus 1 and x plus 1 do not have anything in common factor-wise. And so the LCD is that big, ugly mess. Sorry. That's the way it plays out. So I end up with 3 over x plus h plus 1. And then I need the x plus 1 this time. Minus 3 over, well, now I need the x plus h plus 1. That's the new stuff this time. If I do it to the bottom, I got to do it to the top. And of course, there was already an x plus 1 in the bottom of this one. All of that's still over h. Don't forget your little denominator there, the big denominator, h. Uh, distribute this 3. I'm going to skip a step here or 2. Combine into one big fraction on the top. You get 3x plus 3 when I distribute up top. Minus, distribute the negative 3. 3x minus 3h minus 3. All of that is over x plus h plus 1, x plus 1. Don't foil that out. And then that's all over h. And remember, we're going to think of this as h over 1. So at the end, we can keep change flip. 3x minus 3x, 3 minus 3. And so you end up with the limit of this numerator, negative 3h, all over x plus h plus 1 times x plus 1. And we're going to multiply that by the denominator flipped over, 1 over h. And the reason we do that is because the h is divided away. Okay. So we get the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 3 all over x plus h plus 1 times x plus 1. Plug in 0 for h and get x plus 0 plus 1, x plus 1. And so we get negative 3 over x plus 1, the quantity squared. And that is my derivative for the function 3 over x plus 1. Okay? So again, uh, the good news is, and uh, after this section, the good news is we're going to develop some shortcuts. So we do not have to do these crazy algebra things, but we can't develop those shortcuts without knowing the algebra because that's where the shortcuts come from. Okay. So crank them out. There's only a few problems I want you to practice on and, and do some more, but I know they take a long time. So crank through them. All right. Let's talk about a function that doesn't have a derivative at a particular point. So this function is a piecewise defined function. F of X is X squared plus one uh, when X is greater than or equal to one. And then it is 5x minus 3 when x is less than 1, okay? Now, f prime does exist in certain places, but f prime at 1 does not exist, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, first of all, is it continuous at 1? Well, if you plug in 1 for both of these, the limit as you approach um, at x equal 1 from the right is 2. The limit as you approach x equal 1 from the left is 2. f of 1 is 2, so yes, it f is continuous at x equal 1, okay? If you're not continuous, you can't be differentiable. You can't be differentiable at a whole. That doesn't make any sense. There's no tangent line there. But this is a place where f is continuous at x equal 1, but f prime still does not exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0, and now instead of x being my variable, we're using 1 in place of x. We're looking at one particular point, right? So the Definition then is f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. 
that would be the derivative function for f prime at 1. Plug 1 in for x, okay? Well, here's the problem. As h goes to 0, as h goes to 0 from the right, 1 plus h is bigger than 1. So we have to use up here. But if you're taking h is less than 0, then 1 plus h is actually less than 1, so I have to use this function here. So what do I have to do? I have to check out the limit as h goes to 0 from the right, and I have to check out the limit as h goes to 0 from the left. Okay, So from the right, bigger than 0, we're going to get x bigger than 1. We're going to be looking at x squared plus 1. So we're going to get 1 plus h squared plus 1 minus 1 squared plus 1 all over h. If we're coming from the left, though, we're going to use 5x minus 3 because we're less than 1 now because h is less than 0. And so we end up with 5 times 1 plus h minus 3 minus 5 times 1 minus 3 all over h. So we've got two of these we got to deal with. Hopefully they're not too ugly. But as we take a look at the limit as h approaches 0 from the right, this one up top, we FOIL that out. We get 1 plus 2h plus h squared plus 1 minus 2 all over h. And 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0, and so the constants go away. And I get limit as h approaches 0 of 2h plus h squared over h. All the h's reduce away and leave me with a limit as h goes to 0 from the right of 2 plus h. And so if I plug in 0, I get 2. So the limit as you approach h from, uh, h approaches 0 from the right is equal to 2 for this function. But now the limit as h approaches 0 from the left, distribute out the 5, you get 5 plus 5h minus 3 minus, 5 minus 3 is 2, over h. 5 minus 3 minus 2 is 0, so we get limit as h goes to 0 from the left of 5h over h. The h's divide away, and I just get 5. As h approaches 0, 5 is 5. And so I get 2 from the right-hand side and 5 from the left-hand side. Well, then the limit as h approaches 0 of this function, evaluate this difference quotient, does not exist because it can't be 5 from one side and 2 from the other. All right, so let me show you a picture of what that looks like. The red is the x squared plus 1 parabola. Blue is the straight line 5x minus 3. And notice what happens here. You're coming up, 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 up at a particular slope, and then all of a sudden you change direction, and you have this little, like, corner. It's called a cusp at this point, x equal to 1. Okay? So because of that, then, that means that your tangent line doesn't exist at that point. Anytime you have an abrupt change, a corner, a, a cusp, Right? That's where you would not be differentiable. And so we're going to focus on non-differentiability. Say that five times fast. We're going to focus on that uh, graphically. You guys need to understand how to look at the graph and notice that something is non-differentiable at a particular point. Okay, So I hope that helps, and we'll see you later.